I'm going to click record here. Perfect. Speaking of Zoom, I need help to figure out how to uh, either enable uh, the cloud recordings for my current plan or get a free account or let them reduce the minimum requirement of seats for business account to one because right now it's 10 and really benefit from the inscriptions. So what we should do is um, if you put down your the address that uh, that it's associated with under our tasks here for sponsors we can make that someone who we're targeting to try to get zoom to to bump our account and explain why they need to okay so i put the email in the task Perfect. so right now archer you have just a regular free account is that no what the paid personal one you have a paid personal okay yeah That's what I have. What What is the limitation you're running in? I mean, that's what I'm using There's right now. There's no the... checkbox for transcriptions. Oh, oh, okay. And as you've seen, I'm trying to establish a process for the timestamps, yeah. uh, which are very helpful when I'm producing like 15 videos per day. Mm -hmm. And uh, like there's a Ansoon who is helping me with, with that. But obviously if we have transcriptions, we can A, simplify that, B, yeah. potentially build a system to automatically do that. Yeah, that's Speaking of, great. you know, every problem being machine learning problem. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and then we can make those, um, you know, timestamps and we can make the, uh, pull out the trans tasks from transcriptions. So kind of automating what our note takers are doing then yeah. put them into Trello automatically. Then Love boom, that. we have yeah. the interconnector uh, AI that matches the tasks to the most relevant people. Yeah. Then, then when you get all that set up, can I use it for my business? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Sell and that and then we can earn money for the exactly. for Corona Y. <laughs> exactly, and that's what I was uh, thinking today. Like we, like we're creating so much and we have so much power and infrastructure and resources. Mm -hmm. We can create these amazing tools given you know we will have some free time um in between all the important stuff and we can package it into a product and just yeah. you know become self-sustainable yeah so great stuff all right uh i'll let you guys uh, run the meeting all right no, that's great um okay so why don't we quickly go through um uh, each of us in terms of what we're what we're currently working on and where the blockers are and then I'll, I'll, I'll ramble a little bit about some overall communications pieces, but uh, also I, I wonder if uh, Boris and Tyler um, if you want you can give an, an a kind of an introduction to yourself and if you're wanting to, to dive into more of the communication side of things you can can let us know where where your interest lies and and we're always happy for the help. Hey guys. Um, can your image is fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, I've been kind of paying attention to you guys for the last sort of four, well, maybe close to a week now. And I've been trying to read through the ever growing amount of boards <laughs> in the air. And I'm just like, I don't really know where to throw myself and what I can help with. But I'd like to think I'm pretty good at system thinking and, and organizing things and, pl and, and, for the, and I've got a technical enough mind that I understand some of what people are trying to do, but I'm not a data science person. I've, I go to some of like, there's a there's local groups that do data science occasionally and I've been going to them recently sort of when I, when I could go out and leave the house but um, it's, I have a, a, a good enough mathematical understanding that I understand some of the things what people are trying to do but I'm still there's still a lot for me to be able to go like, yeah really absolutely know. and quick um, question you're, and, the, you're the um, guy from UK that was talking about government yeah. being helpless in this absolutely yeah. yeah amazing I, I read your message and I was like Exactly, and that's how I am yeah. feeling right now. Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly it. It's like um, I'm I've been very political for a very long time. I'm for actively political. I've uh, been an activist for a long time, and I'm literally the definition of unactive right now. I can't do anything. I've signed up to loads of volunteering stuff. I used to do support work and care work, so I do have enough skill sets that I can do stuff in the community when I'm allowed to. I work in schools currently, so I have like a very a very personable and very good at talking so that's what i try and i'm trying to hope that i can maybe bring some of that skill to bear but I, I'm, I'm i'm i've run a, like online groups and made online products and online services for a very long time so i'm kind of used to working remotely at distance and distance i've you know we've done i've made podcasts with friends literally one in america one in italy one in ireland and one in britain it's like and we did it every week for for months on end so i'm kind of used to this 
the systems. I mean, the reason why I've got Trello is because of that. The reason why I've got Trello is because of um, that, that projects and then places I worked on. But um, I'm just trying to work out what I, where I can be helpful because there's lots and lots of people. I'm noticing there's lots of people who are trying to help, but they're also don't know what to help with or how to help. Yeah. And and I'm also kind of noticing the pattern. Probably everyone's feeling the same way I am. And there's lots of very smart, very capable people. And there's lots of people going, oh, there's probably someone smarter and more capable to do it. So I'm not going to step yeah. on anyone's toes. Exactly. And I'm, to, and I'm trying to work out how to overcome that intention, that feeling in myself going, yeah. I am definitely not capable of doing anything useful. There's too many smart people compared to me. But I'm also going just like I have been with politics, it's like, you just got to lean into it. You just got to yeah. do what you can. I mean, that's, and, it. it's a, and, it's, and it's a difficult feeling to get overcome. It's yeah. a very much a complicated idea to be able to go, oh no, well, I might not be the best person, but sometimes the only person who turns up is the best person because that's all you've got. So I'm starting to realize that, okay, I can, I don't, I don't have to be so sensitive and proving that I've got value or proving that yeah. I've got, I've got like credentials because I don't, I'm a very much, doesn't uh, matter, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very much a, a jack of all trades. I'm a technical person. I'm using, I know music production, music technology. Oh, wow. I can teach, I can teach and I do teach, but, um, but I can teach technical things in simple ways, which is hopefully something that I can help. Bridging, yeah, I I've always been very good at bridging the technical and the non-technical people because I understand enough technical and how to explain it in a more simplistic way. So that's why I'm trying to hope that I can find a way of being useful in that way. Because, you know, there's, it's getting things like, if you get medical experts and people with medical knowledge on, but they might not be tech yeah. kids, they might not be techie people. And I'm like, exactly when someone's going, I don't know how to use this software. It's like, I know AV, I know technology, I know streaming technology, I know I, I can hopefully get people on board with the technical problems, or if, if nothing else, simplify the understanding because yeah, I don't use Zoom a lot, but I, I understand enough of it. I can set up audio. My girlfriend's been, my girlfriend's a psychologist and she's working from home a lot as well. And she's like, I don't know. I've got, yeah, if most people say my, my computer setup is like way more complicated than everyone else's because I'm used to running that way. So the side effect of this, I can. There is I can, a high probability your wife will jo uh, join us soon. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somehow Probably that's, I'm that's, a, that's, that's you know. To, to, to the point of what we've got right now, she's a child psychologist, she works in child psychology, but we've actually got to the point where like, we actually have like back to back desks now. Yeah. <laughs> cause, cause we've had to both work from home and I'm, and I'm that I've obviously I've been growing more and more into like trying to dig through this and going, oh no, I actually, I mean, I'm doing a course as well. And I'm like, say the volunteering stuff might come up, but I'm like, I want to be useful. And yeah. it's, it's so frustrating to be sat at the side going, yeah. You know, I'm sharing information on Facebook a lot. I'm trying to re -edu you know, educate people how to critical, critical analyze what people are saying. I'm mm -hmm. trying to make people understand. And I've, I've always been that sort of way around. I've always been trying to help people get rid of ignorance. And I use the word ignorance is just lack of knowledge, not, you know, because yeah. mm -hmm. there's intentional ignorance and unintentional ignorance. And I'm very much a unintentional ignorance can be taught away. Intentional ignorance, I can't do anything about, but right, we can. <laughs> <laughs> But unintentional ignorance, I can hopefully offset. I, I, you know, I like that like phrasing. A, yeah. <laughs> well, intentional think, ignorance and intent versus intentional. Yeah. And I think that yeah, we can I, do it with. Oh, go ahead, Tyler. You know, you got. Let's go. I was going to say, and I think the thing we can do around intentional ignorance is exactly what we're doing, which is we make and and, and what you speak to so eloquently that what we do is we bring forward all of the data. We turn mm -hmm. it into things that are both in terms of the visuals and the communication, something that's so yeah. compelling and clear that the people who want to find out can work their way around the intentional ignorance that's also kind of in the way. Um, I think the skill set that you're describing is, is so perfect for what we need here. It's amazing. Um, and even if the, even like, so there's all of that, but if, if the only thing you did was express what you just expressed in a way that other people can hear and resonate with, in terms of like, like I'm, because I have that feeling all the time. I'm like, I'm surrounded by people, like literally rocket scientists yeah. who I'm, I'm having to, to figure out like, okay, how do we help them in the tasks that they're doing here? And so I think, I don't know if anyone who's here who probably doesn't have imposter syndrome kicking off, like who the hell am I to be doing All the time. Tasks? All Why the time. Why am I uh... Exactly. Yeah. And, and, well, and the, and the, the fact that we all fail it, the <laughs> fact that we all fail it, we need to maybe frame that as a like idea of like, oh no, you're not the perfect person. You're not the per perfect person on the planet to do it. But you turned up. I mean, I've That's got, right. I've always had a, I've always yeah. had like a, a really, I've always had a really good quote that's always stuck in my head. And it's a Terry, Pratt, it's a Terry Pratchett quote. 
famous author, and Terry yeah. Pratchett has always described witches as not magical beings. They're the person, the people who turn towards the problem mm -hmm. to try and fix it. And, right. and I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely like our entire family, my entire family are just people who are witches. We're just like, <laughs> right, where's the problem? Like, I'll walk towards the problem until yeah. I can work out what I can do. I might not know what I'm going to do once I find the problem, but I'm not going to walk away from it and pretend like someone else is going to turn up. And I'm, that's what I'm just turning that's off and just trying to help. Yeah. That's all I can and so do. one of the things that, that and I think this is really good. I, I think that for, we'll get to some of the minutia in this call, but the themes that we're circling on around right now are some of the core things that as communications we need to be kind of getting out there into the world. I think that one of the pieces I, I was, I was uh, writing to, to Rowan earlier today that, that I'd love to try to get across is, you know, for, for our generation, this is the piece that like, it's the, it's the vision and the big picture thinking um, and the rallying around of the moonshot with the high stakes and the need for people to step up and do things of of you know the the world arms war race. era and world war and arms races exactly and so and so it's it's the best of both of those and the fact that like there there is no human bad guy there is no black and white in terms of what we're trying to do what we're trying to do is something that all of humanity benefits from um, and where absolutely anyone who can essentially pick up a keyboard is someone who can be can be vital in what it is that we're trying to do here. And mm -hmm. I think the more we're able to get that out to people, um, that's that's what's going to spark interest, and that's what's going to going to get people more involved. So I mean, that, like I said, I've, I come from a, a tech space, but I've always described it as tech adjacent. And the best way I can describe it is like I'm next to very techy people, but I'm not the very techy person. But the side effect of that is, is I've got, even on my Facebook, I've got people who are coders in various different, like I've got people who are code designers in Taiwan and I've got people who are UX designers in America because I, my, my Ableton group, which is the software I use, has got 23,000 members in it and I've been an admin for 10 years. And you just pick up more and more smart, weird people from all over the world and you just go like, oh, you're, you're really cool. And, we're, we're, and, and yeah, you build, you, build, you build up this broad knowledge pool and you build up smart people and like i said i've and I, i've shared a, i basically shared arta's um medium post about this is a you know the this the coronavirus and what's going to be going on and i shared that and then i tagged every smart person i knew who might even be interested in. and i'm like and i won't mind but it was a big list of guys so i'm not yeah. gonna lie you know I, i'd happily bring more women into it and I'm, I'm there's definitely a place for it i've got a family full of women i'm very pro women being but at the same time you know most geeky weird people I know are guys and we just have to accept this as it is right now. So, what? so I, yeah, I just tagged like about 20 people. Like some of them are qualified up to shit. Other people are just like geeky weird people who don't who, who think about the world differently or see the world differently. And I've got no qualifications, but they, they might have the time and inclination to come on board and just, even if it is just process problems or solve getting, just even if it's just talking through a problem, because sometimes talking through a problem can, exactly and yeah, i love this exactly. so far it, it's even like i love that this call is less about agenda and just like free talking free form because that that's exactly what we are experiencing here for the past uh, almost two weeks i believe i don't even remember how many i mean uh, I, I have a i have a very i'm used to doing this probably a lot more than any of you guys I have been in the streaming community for seven or eight years. I literally hang out with full-time full -time streamers and I'll game with them, but I'll talk for hours on end about science or politics or that's, weather. That's or, amazing. And, and, I'm con and I'm constantly doing it all the time. Like every day I'll talk for hours with really smart people who have no qualifications, but we just bullshit talk. <laughs> we talk about whatever's going on. And obviously COVID and coronavirus has been a fairly yeah. strong discussion for the last three weeks. And we've been yeah, talking the, about the and, giving a name to this, you know, phenomena and yeah. the best, you know, analogies that we had was Daniel was just like, you leave a spark here, spark there, and then all of a sudden it, it becomes a fire. And it's all about just like brainstorming here, brainstorming there, and two, three days after you you have something and it just mm -hmm. appears magically. One thing that uh, that I think is because I think the more you know we have our our pieces on the task list of trying to get get some interviews going with the different people who are involved in doing things and I think the more like again that's I think where there's a lot of the real energy and where we can because because people are putting so much time and energy and heart into what we're doing here and the more we're able to capture that and help reflect that out I think that that's that's powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, one related but tangential piece that I wanted to touch on. Um, 
I love Arthur in, in your article that you've done um, when you talk about some of the pieces like you know the the government's turning to to like trying to get the people who are doing this kind of thing and the the liberal use of idiocracy memes that you have thrown <laughs> is nice and and one of the things that I think we have to figure out as an That's organization. People know about that movie, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Idiocracy is such great. a good movie. Such but, a good movie. But one of the things that I think is key is we is we figure out how to how as an organization do we present ourselves and how do we present in a way that allows us to be individuals with our own character and our own flavor and our own political leanings and all of those pieces. While as an organization, especially around the uh, around the political piece how do we stay rigidly apolitical as an organization because if we get to the place where where we're moving beyond the kaggle challenge we're moving into deeper work on the data we have to figure out how do we make it so that um the different policy bodies and governments and pieces that are out there are able to um to take what we have to give them and this is a question this is one idea is that by by, by following that track we're able to um, to have them more easily take our information and run with it, rather than seeing us as a part of some other group than reject it and, and than positioning being themselves based yeah. off of perceived politics. Um, but yeah, I may, I may have to reduce the amount of idiocracy <laughs> memes. I, I understand. That. <laughs> but but it's tricky because it also I mean the more you it's look into it, the more clear it is around some of those pieces. So, but it also it, it's also about like I said, maintaining personable and personality and that's right tech tech geeky weirdness because let's be fair we're, and, we're just going to be a lot and of you know with it's not leaning. just about techie because somehow we we are attracting people with shared beliefs that are not necessarily geeky that, but really resonate to the beliefs and all of you know things that we're talking about like it's it's somewhat i start to think about it as a natural way and what i mean by natural you know, as human beings, we're collaborative. We are the, you mm -hmm. know, we are, we intend to help other people. Yeah. And it's just the, the byproduct of our current system and society that kind of let us forget about that aspect. Yeah. And now when the, there is this common enemy that finally woke us up and showed us that, hey, I'm here and I may as well kill you all. Like we finally realized that, you know, all the other things don't really matter. And what matters is, you know, our core natural ability to help each other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I, so I completely agree. I was, yeah. So, Daniel, harking back to what you were just saying, what I, I'm trying to do the notes simultaneously while we're on the meeting this time, so that I don't uh, put it as a to-do item later. So, I, what I was hearing from you is kind of how do we stay on brand and um, have kind of a, a group identity while still allowing people to have their individual personalities. Um, and you know, I, I guess what was the first thing that popped in my head, and I'm sure I'm not the first person who who's thought thought this, is that. Um, what we're doing is obviously very viral, like in a sense. And so that obviously kind of builds, we could just kind of ex extrapolate that theme from we're fighting the virus in a viral way, in a sense, you yeah. know, fire with fire. So um, I, I'll just. And you know what, why it's viral? Because I think it's natural. It's organic. Right. It is organic. It's everything mm -hmm. that is unnatural is not viral. And virus is natural, you know, that's, that's the thing that existed for millions of years. And that's why it's so, you know, effective at, at what it's doing. So I do feel that what we're doing is viral because yeah. it's natural. And I mean, just to play with imagery and some of that piece, because last night my brain was just on fire with all this stuff around, like, what's the nature of what we are? And like going into the whole cybernetic side of like, you know, learn from nature, learn from the systems that mm -hmm. nature uses to self-regulate. Um, and that's absolutely what we are. And the thing that comes closest to mind for me is a slime mold, where you have all of these different pieces that are functioning independently and doing their own thing. And then when when a crisis situation comes, then they come together and act as a complex single organism. Oh, I love that. And I think that one of the things that that is, I mean, this is maybe an underlying message that is post Kaggle for us to tackle, but um, is that what we're doing right now, what this, what this whole organism that we're creating is, um, we as humans are really great at creating systems. We're good at concretizing those systems and then turning them to a certain purpose. And, 
and then getting mired in those systems. And, mm -hmm. and the, the crisis that we're currently facing is allowing us to reevaluate. It's forcing us to reevaluate a lot of those systems. And as Archer was saying, just that that basic human nature of like, yeah, we, we collaborate and we innovate and that's what we do as a species um, is coming to the fore. Mm -hmm. And that it's maybe coming to the fore in a way that's going to allow us to bump out of a little bit of the the grooves that we've locked ourselves into where i mean i think agreed to, with that yeah mm -hmm. to, 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 to whack sideways a little for a second and then and then i'll stop talking um the i i think around things like you know it's very hard to get certain kinds of collaboration going because of the the intellectual property pieces that are there and then when you get a group that's this big and and innovative together all of a sudden you have all of these these amazing innovations coming out and and that we just need to figure out how do we like great how do we make all of this to be able to be prior use so that from now on anybody can take any of the stuff that we've done and keep on running with that and that there's this ability for great yeah anyways I'll, I'll stop talking in a sec but but just there's a lot of potential on that big vision side of what are we as a species and what is the glimpse of what we're becoming as a species that you know not to get too grandiose but the corona y is a, is a glimpse at, at what that's about yeah paul um have you heard of paul mason like quite a fit british he's a british writer journalist but paul mason wrote a book called post capitalism it's all about the shared shared economy literally the sharing economy and this is the definition of the sharing economy it's like the idea is nobody's getting paid nobody's doing it because they're getting paid they're doing it because collaboratively they want to solve a problem and that's what people do it is an organic part of our society which we've never monetized and we've always pretending like it's not really a thing because it can't be monetized it is the family unit it is the small communities yeah. doing things together it is parents looking after children it is the organic parts of the society which we've always ignored until the economic part of the society took a big fat kick <laughs> and everyone went actually the economics is there to support the communal not the communal supposed to support the economic the economics is the means to the end not the ends itself and it's been left for so long as the ends mm. to everything else it's been forgotten that yeah if we don't look after people, we don't look after anything. If we don't look after the planet we live on, we don't live look after anything. It's the systems that are the, the organic systems that live exist. You they're supported by love. They're like supported that, by the uh, talk that I was preparing before this whole thing happened. It was exactly about what you're talking about. I even um, I invented this kind of the uh, um, the thing called great arrow of potential. And to describe it, uh, let me actually quickly share that with you. I think that that will resonate, um, hopefully. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, I've just... Yeah, we can see your screen now. Oh, hey, Boris, I didn't realize you were on there. So here you can Boris see... Boris is just quiet. The, the great arrow of potential. Uh, you know, there, there yeah. is easy, which is couch potato, Netflix, all kinds of... Uh, stuff and then there is hard the things that you know Elon Musk, Tesla, Da Vinci, and other people are creating, and we're you know the the goal of our us as a species is actually moving from left to right, right? But it's and the question comes why we're not moving and progressing, and that's where I uh, created this analogy of corporate potato, yeah, <laughs> constantly drowning us. Um, you know, on the way from from couch potato to um, to innovation. I, know, I told them we're running behind. And basically, this is you know that this is the piece that got the sinkhole, yeah, removed right now. You know, the reason why we're so you know fast at moving to the right is because this disappeared for a second. You know, I think also the part of the the reason why is well, this seems to be working is because focus like so many people are so obsessed about being the center of something or being the innovator mm. yeah the, the name structure. because well be, right because yeah. of the because of the financial advantages of being the founder of the maker the, of this and the, the heropreneur yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the hero the hero exactly the, the the who wants to like then hang their hat on it and be the name behind it it's so common that everyone's skeptical of the person who is that the head of that that pyramid and the side effect of this 
generations of since the 60s generations of skepticism towards leadership and the top of the tree the idea that this is we don't and a part of the problem is is we've had so, we've had generations and generations of terrible leaders <laughs> so we've started to just realize that being the leader is not actually being the capable person it's the person who can bullshit the best and that's not an effective yeah, exactly. method of leadership yeah and well, the, the side effect of that is we're in the side effect of that we're into a state as where we've had a generations and generations since the 60s and the 80s in britain especially where we've been told this is how things need to be and then and there's there's so many examples that it doesn't work that the people who are just smart and skeptical don't get involved they just keep yeah they keep with the easy things or they keep with the small little bubbles of little communities doing little things on the side entertaining themselves or challenging themselves to well, let's see if we can solve this little weird problem or that little weird problem. The side effect of this is it's coalesced all of them, tiny little fragmented little groups, all at one problem. Yeah. And it's, it's a focal effect of just like, there's a massive problem and we're all in the firing line. So we can either focus our attention on it or we can pretend like it's going to go away like it's the seasonal flu. And it isn't. And the amount of, the amount of people I've argued with is like, Oh no, this is small now, but you need to understand that it's a virus that grows at an exponential rate. And so many people can't get mathematic exponential. Yeah. Because it's so counterintuitive. Jumping, jumping back to the piece, because I think this is key, where um, I think we do have a certain, um, uh, it's, it's like a, a, an optimism immunity to certain things like this happening. And that, that's really important for us to look at and look at how do we, from our communications standpoint, um, message in a way that helps people actually track into the nature of what it is we're doing. Two of the things that for me, I think are key on that is, you know, um, Arthur has had, has had um, the vision, has set up the flair and is working on getting the organizational pieces together. But in terms of things like the big four problems that we're tackling, the process that was done there was a democratic process of helping people figure out, working together to figure out what it should be. And I think that like telling a story like that is powerful. Mm -hmm. Another one that I think is a really, like one of the best ones we can get out there is the, is the task treatments group. Because that one is some people having a conversation, realizing that there was something useful to do, that conversation building into a channel, that channel building into like, okay, well, I guess we need to have a Trello board and have the support there. And then that's going to become a full, a fully fledged task on its own that we'll be, we'll be trying to figure out how to throw resources at. And that to really get across that that's what this organization is about. It's not about um, how does management browbeat, browbeat the minions into appropriately towing the line. It's about how do we as a functional organism bring the wisdom and the ideas from every single part of it together um, and then and then operationalize that into something that's that's fun. yeah and hopefully and i think our greatest power here and our greatest vision is creating a case study and the template the structure for people to navigate into this brave new world and understand yeah. that there could be hundreds of corona wise popping out and just figuring things out on the fly and yeah. hopefully we create that template and I'm, I'm one of the things, this is more on the PM side than on the, on the comm side, but as one of the sets of outreach I'm trying to do is I really want to get a couple of people from the original sociocratic group to in, involved here so that they can get an eye on what we're doing and help us and help inform that. Because some of the things we're doing are just brand new and have never been done. And there's some things that are really akin to some tools that were developed back in the 50s and 60s in the Netherlands around electrical engineering. Um, but looking at how we make organic systems like this that, that function effectively. Anyways, um, I'd love to hear, uh, Boris, you haven't had a chance to say much of anything. And one of the things I know we need to do is make sure that we, we give the, the space for that as well. So I'd love yeah. to hear what your reflections are. If you're wanting to share them. Is he, is he on mute here? Let me see, Boris. He's on mute you, right now. Boris, are you willing to unmute here? Can I un unmute yourself? There. Hello? Okay. Yes. Hi, Boris. Hi. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Thoughts? Uh, just your thoughts. So, so, you know, we have a few different themes we've been kind of talking around, but in terms of either what we're talking about or your engagement with Corona Y and what that's been looking like, like what's, what's kind of your framing on what's, what we're, what's going on? Uh, so, sorry, can, can you write in the chat, please? Yeah. Oh. Yes. So, sorry. Language barrier. Yeah. Where Where are you, Boris? 
uh, from Chile. Oh, Chile. Oh. Chile. Yes. That's another amazing thing. We have people from all over the world. Uh, we also have to improve on communication uh, too, mm. because sometimes we're using, you know, idioms and kind of complicated word structures, and not everyone is able I'm to understand. Speaking fast. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I do talk fast. It's a problem. We, we all I, do, I think. Yeah. And especially me, because I have to, you know, communicate as fast as possible. That's a real thing. But and yeah. Archer, are you Ukrainian? Is that I am. Really? What is going on in the Ukraine? You guys are just churning out all these amazing people. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in a, you know, I do a lot in, a, in augmented reality and they're just like, the Ukrainians are all over it. Like they're just got, it, cor there. got it cornered. Yeah. All right, uh, Boris, do you still want to jump in? It just has... Okay, yes. sorry for that. Uh, where is the um, here? Just click on, yeah, just click the, on the one. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, for people oh. that are watching the recording and don't see the chat, where it says that he never thought that it would be possible to have such a large and strong community so fast. It, it, it is incredible. Mm -hmm. It's very strong. I don't know, uh, um, the the scope is very, is very strong, but the, the levels, uh, in the first uh, week, uh, you can see, I don't know, uh, 100 uh, engineer. Okay, is you, you can make project manager, management with that, but now is, I don't know, 400. It's 800 okay, it's, people, it's, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Yes, it's crazy. Say, we're gonna it's hit climbing at a crazy rate. Yeah. It's climbing at a crazy rate. Even if, even if all of them thousand people could only put like 10% effort in, I use that as a concept, even if they could only put 10% effort in, it's still a lot of man hours that could be put. Out. Like, mm. yeah, there's gonna have to be a core group of people doing a lot of the structure and thinking, because otherwise, if you only know a tiny bit of it, you can only look at it. Um, even if you can get lots of people just like say contributing when they can and, and helping out where just even if it's in small doses but there's a hell of a lot of people who are working from home who were just yeah feeling helpless and lost yeah. the smartest message we can get out is losing jobs was, there's so many people yeah. that have nothing to do they lost I don't. yeah I mean that's that's the thing I I come from the venture world and most of the startups that I was primarily helping are just done that's yeah, it. Mm. Yeah. Just, just the sum. I mean, I was, I, I do a lot of networking locally in, in Yorkshire where I'm from. And I do like, a, I've done lots of local calls regarding networking stuff. I'm, I'm not working in digital currently, but I mean, I'm, I'm wanting to move into UX and digital as a general, I'm interested in research and the point where technology meets people. This is literally what I'm interested in. So what this is, is the definition of that exact problem mm -hmm. on a global scale. And I'm like, I feel massively or underqualified in every single, single way, shape or form. But at the same time, I'm like, if I don't lean into this and at least if nothing else, it's going to be an example of me trying and mm -hmm. that's all I can do. <laughs> so if I can only bring that to it and that's all I can do. Yeah. So um, what, oh, go ahead, Julia. Oh, go, no, go ahead, Daniel. No, I've been talking a lot. <laughs> no, no, you haven't really. No, I should say, I hate to uh, be a party pooper, but I'm on a bit of a timeline yep. here. Yep, me too. Um, so th this is super fun, I have to say, uh, this conversation. A couple quick things as I was trying to catch up with the Slack communication that's happened over the last few days. Are we still trying to find um, computation power with AWS or Azure? Or did somebody find that or what? No update on that. Yeah, we still need to find it. Um, we had a we had a bit a little bit of movement. That's great. Uh, Mike Honey put together a good formulation of of what he needs for Power BI and why. And so that's that's my hope is that we can use that as an example, target okay. some, to try to get some sponsorship using that, and that that can help the other teams kind of spur them on to say like, no, really, if if we can find out exactly what you need, that's what lets us ask for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've got. I mean, I I have. I have some, a couple people at Amazon that I know, and I have a, a person over at Microsoft 
that I could ask about the Azor. Um, the, the good positive side is they're kind of in marketing, so they mm -hmm. might see the value of this, of, of sponsoring. Um, yeah. if, 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 where can I find what Mike needs? And then if, um, if there's something I could like put a blurb in an email to these people to kind of put some I, barriers around what we're looking for would be helpful. I think right now it's in the Slack and I need to, I just saw it before the meeting started. So I'm going to formulate okay. it onto one of the cards. I have an idea. So okay. Arthur had seen a tweet by one of the people who is at Amazon, who's a higher level person, it sounds like, who was specifically saying like, we want to be throwing resources at people who are working on COVID. I think what we need is for one person, and we need to time it, um, probably Arthur, to say like, okay. hey, here's, here's what we're doing on, and, and in a tweet, say, here's, here's what we're doing. Um, we'd love to talk about resources, and then mm, have perfect. every single willing member of Corona Y to retweet that, to broadcast it, to amplify it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So that from a, from a marketing point of view, realize, okay, we're gonna get a good bang for the buck if we're sponsoring these people, because a lot of people are gonna find out about that. Okay, so okay, I, that's I think a good that strategy. A good approach. Okay, that's good strategy. So I, I'll hold off doing any emails. If for some reason that doesn't work, then we can try my folks. So, but I think that's a much better, oh, I, I, much smarter strategy. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I think I think multi pronged is great. I, th okay. I, th I think let's absolutely check with your folks, and if we think that they okay. might be able to do something, then let's do that. Mm -hmm. But why don't we see if we can figure out? And I mean, generally, I think this is one of the things we if if we've got coming up on up on a thousand people, um, mm -hmm. to let them know. You know, if you're not even if you're not doing anything on a team. Um, you can if, still if all you're doing is upvoting <laughs> or retweeting the occasional thing, that, that is exactly yeah. one of the most powerful things that can be done is us as a collective doing that, that yeah. that'll help us get the, the megaphone that we need to be yeah. bringing in the resources that we need. Probably having a consistent hashtag, if that's the case. Hashtag yeah. Corona, yeah. Why yeah, do, we have any, just, just... do we have any hashtags that we've formulated or? I mean, the name of it makes Corona sense. Y, I don't yeah. think... Corona wise, is pretty much a name on its own. Yeah. I don't think anyone else has got it. I looked completely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then just a, yeah. a couple, a couple more quick, just kind of broad stroke pieces, and then let's close down because I really want to respect your time. Um, so we have Rohan on board now. He's going to be going through. Um, he's doing a total restructure of the website just to get it into a form where it'll be easier for us to, to flex it moving forward. Uh, and, then, and then I think from that to do list, all of the things tagged website. He's going to be kind of working on those. There's a couple of things we're stuck on. We need to communicate with Causally to figure out um, whether we can use our team account or whether we need to make even just a single other account that's, you know, Joe Smith at coronawide.org so that it doesn't look like a team account and talk to other people to say, like, is that fine? Um, we also need to um, figure out that AO AI2 workshop and try to get that moving quickly because the sooner that happens, probably the better that is in terms of our relationship with, with AI and Kaggle as we come up onto the, the recruiting side, I mean, the, the competition time there. Uh, and I've started to do a bunch more outreach. So one of the things that we really need, um, I think that any of those of us who are trying to do outreach to our local press or our national press, having a solid press kit and having a few easy bullet points that we can just fire out to 50 different outlets um, would be really uh, helpful. So I don't know if anyone who's either on the call or who's watching it after, but that's one of my next HR pieces that I'm going to be trying to look for is someone who can help us with that side of the PR thing. I have one person I'm looking at. Um, she's very busy because she's good at that sort of thing, but we're going to see if she can donate some time. Um, Sounds any... good. Uh, I'll have to jump out. So I think we've covered pretty much, you know, a lot of stuff in high level. <laughs> we have Trello board with specific asks. And yeah, let's, let's just move into Slack in, in terms of resolving those specific asks. And yeah, let's, let's hope that tomorrow uh, call will be as, as fun as, as today's. And the last thing I'll put on that is I think that we should try to have once a week a call, which is more of this, which is mm -hmm. looking at that big picture thing, inviting all of the different people in and getting people to talk about what they're excited about, because that'll, that'll that's, bring a lot yeah. of energy. Yep. Well, that and, and that, that's great then content to, to utilize right. moving forward too. So, For yeah. sure. All right. Great. Sounds Thanks good, guys. Everyone. Thank have you. Have a good night. Bye. Nice to Bye. meet you, Tyler.